Good morning, Spartans. Happy Thursday, March 17th. Uh, it is St. Patty's Day. However, uh, due to what appears to be a biological weapon unleashed by the English department on the social studies department, I am really not feeling the luck of the Irish right now. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in a hurt locker. Uh, I am obviously out sick today. <clears throat> the freshman English teacher will go unnamed uh, who got several of us sick. Uh, so in my stead here, there is this video to watch where I will explain what's going on today, kind of reiterate the topic that we discussed yesterday so you can double check your work and then you will move on. Uh, if at any point in time you need to stop the video so you uh, can write something down, change something on your documents, obviously do it, All right? Uh, this is the only video that you need to see uh, today. So we'll obviously skip current events. We'll review the chart that you guys did on the functionalism perspective. I'm going to briefly, and I mean briefly, talk about conflict perspective. And then you or you and a partner, I don't really care. You guys are going to work on filling in the chart for the conflict perspective. Same chart next. It's the next um, next column over. That will be due tomorrow. That needs to be done for tomorrow. That is where we will pick up tomorrow. Should I, you know, be alive? Uh, that is where we'll begin tomorrow in class. When you are done with that, then you are to finish the chapter one reading guide. Uh, you have questions eleven through fifteen to do. Um, for Friday, we'll pick up with symbolic interactionism uh, after we discuss conflict. So with that, um, we need a couple of things in front of us. You probably need your reading guide. You need your reading guide in front of you so you can, well, yeah, you need some reading. You need your reading guide in front of you that might allow you to copy and paste some things in. Um, you need to have your key concepts chart in front of you, okay? um and my guess is your notes are something to write with all right so yesterday we were talking about functionalism okay we were talking about the five concepts of sociology every society has functions right every society has little individual parts little in individual things that serve a purpose to society literally could be anything could be families, could be religions, could be hospitals. I mean, any, any part of society serves a function, all right? We're talking about functional integration. All of those things are connected. Your phones, a library book, whatever, all connected. Power, A, controlling B, culture, what we do think, believe, C, values, norms, social action, our behavior based on our position in the social structure. Our social structure is our position in society. All societies have these things. It doesn't matter if you're in Africa, South America, or the United States. The perspectives that we're looking at are explaining or analyzing behavior or the evolution of behavior based on these concepts. First one that we did yesterday was functionalism. Okay. Now, I told you the part of society that was changing was women entering the workforce, right? Our economy serves a function. Jobs serve a function. The workforce serves a function. That is the part of society performing a function. Women are entering the workforce. This will then cause a ripple effect throughout the rest of the sociological concepts. Culture is going to change. I asked you guys to have down specific examples of how culture will change if women go to work. Those examples could be uh, lower birth rates, right? If women are working, it's a pretty good chance women are having less children. Uh, women are going to start going to college.
And I'm going to say advanced degrees because I mean, women have always gone gone to college. For them, I mean, since the since the 20th century, women have always gone to college to be nurses, to be clerical workers, to be uh, teachers. Not lawyers, not doctors, not advanced degrees. That's going to change. This is also because women are going to school, going to lower birth rates. It's also going to uh, lower rates of marriage. Okay. These things all might change. The values that women have might change. They may not need to. Uh, be so quick to marry, to find financial support, to provide, to find a provider. You may have increased beliefs in uh, female independence. Right, these things will will change. They will change because women are entering the workforce. Power is going to change. Now, I will argue that white Protestant heterosexual men are probably still the most powerful societal group in the United States. No question about that. However, I think we can write that women are no longer dependent on men. Group A doesn't necessarily control group B anymore. Change to the social structure. I don't know if there's a change to the social structure here. I don't know if women, um, if women's place in society has changed yet. Still haven't had a female president. Still haven't had that yet. Um, could there be? Could there be a more equal footing? Between men and women, perhaps, perhaps. I mean, I, I wouldn't mark it wrong if you said that uh, women um, moved at least closer to an, an equal footing with men. Right, if we were to go and look at, you know, the social structure that you guys wrote for your families, I think most of you put your mom was on top. Your mom was the head of the family. Now, I don't know if that's for financial reasons or, uh, you know, because your dad is off working or it could be a whole host of reasons. All right. Social action. Social action is going to change depending on our social structure. Right. If women have a more equal footing compared to men. Women are going to start making their own financial choices. They're not living on an allowance anymore, right? They don't need to verify everything with their husband since they too are working. Women make their own financial choices. Uh, women are no longer restricted. certain types of uh, employment or education. That's not how you spell education. Really could be any of these things. But again, you change, I mean, it's, this is the whole functionalism perspective. You change one part of society, it is going to cause a ripple effect. It'll affect our social structure. It'll affect our norms and values. It'll affect our behavior. Now, what you have to understand about functionalism is that functionalism is a perspective that analyzes social change through harmony, through cooperation, through everyone feeling happy and enjoying cotton candies and, and, and riding on little pink unicorns. It's really kind of a utopian perspective of society. It doesn't always work. Functionalist, functionalist, uh, functionalism theorists would argue that 
women entered the workforce because people realized that it wasn't intelligent to have half of our population not working, to have half of our not of our population not earning money, to have half of our population not educated. All right, that's the functional perspective. They're going to argue. They're going to argue that women started to enter the workforce because we realized that it was, you know, it wasn't good to leave half the population unexposed to these things. Conflict is a little bit different. Conflict is going to argue that change is going to happen, that this particular change, that women going into the workforce is going to happen because of conflict, because of the uh, being fed up with group A controlling group B. People who support the conflict perspective are going to explain this change because they're going to argue that women got tired of doing what men wanted them to do, of not being independent, of not being educated, of not having choice, of being second class. Functionalism analyzes, analyzes change to society based on individual components serving a purpose, serving a function, if you will. If a function of society, according to functionalism, if a function of society isn't performing, isn't performing a service, isn't having an impact, or isn't having a positive impact, then it's not a function, it's a dysfunction. Dysfunctions are eliminated. Dysfunctions are no longer practiced, you would hope. Women entering the workforce, functionalist will, uh, functionalism uh, theorists would argue, is because people realize the dysfunction of leaving half the population uneducated, at home, not producing. Conflict perspective theorists are gonna argue women enter the workforce, not because of dysfunction, but because women are pissed. That, that, that's it, that, that's the difference. Functionalism analyzes social change through function and dysfunction. Does a part of society provide positive impact? Conflict, change of society happens because group B has had enough of group A. So here's what you're going to do. You're still going to um, write down examples for how functional integration, culture, power, social structure, social action uh, changes, okay, due to win women entering the workforce. But instead of starting at the functional integration where women enter the workforce, you're going to start down here at power. And the change is going to be women or group A are fed up with being controlled by men, group B, All right? And then from here, how is that going to change the social structure? How is that going to change the social action? What functions of society are going to change because women are fed up with being controlled by men? And then how is that going to change culture? Here's a little hint so your brains don't melt. I don't know if what you have down in the, the individual categories for functionalism is going to be any different than what you have down for the conflict perspective. They might be the same. Your examples might be the same, and that's okay. The difference between functionalism and conflict is conflict starts with power. Functionalism starts with the individual part of society and funnel, functional integration. So again, go through, uh, have an example, a specific example, all right, 
of how these categories of sociology are going to change because women, group uh, A, are controlled by group B. We will go through these tomorrow. They shouldn't take you very long since you've already done the functionalism uh, theory. Then the rest of your time is spent answering questions one through, uh, sorry, 11 through 15 on the chapter one reading guide. This is the end of chapter one. You will need to turn this document in tomorrow to get credit. All right, these are 20 point assignments, so you don't want to sissy foot around with this. Tomorrow, we'll review conflict perspective. We'll talk about something called symbolic interactionism, which I'm going to tell you right now is confusing. It's confusing for me. I still have to reread this chapter every time I teach it because it's mind numbing. So you may have to read the section more than once. All right. Make sure the functionalism column is done. Make sure the conflict column is done and then finish up the chapter one reading guide the whole thing for tomorrow that does get turned in hope we're all doing well if you have a question shoot me an email i'm going to try to be around my email i don't know if i'm going to be alive or if i'm going to be vertical um but i'll try to answer emails i hope you have a great day uh happy saint patty's day as always uh go spartans <laughs>